Following on from his commentary to the superfluous kazot, Rashi now focuses upon the first of the items that Yosef sent to his father, the Mituv Mitzrayim, the translation of which is from the choicest, from the best that was available in Egypt at the time. Rashi offers us two options. The first option is that he sent Yayin Yashan, this an option drawn for Gwara Megillah. The second from the Medrash Agada, that he sent Grisin Shalpul, split peas or split beans. And there is a note in the art scroll Rashi that split beans have a calming, soporific effect, soporific causing or tending to cause sleep suggesting that old people may have trouble falling asleep, and Yosef sent along today's equivalent of sleeping pills. The Rebbe raises or points out three anomalies with respect to Rashi's commentary, and the third of the three anomalies has three parts. The first of these, though technically not an anomaly, focuses upon the two options that Rashi provides as to what the Mituv Mitzrayim was. It is built upon what I would turn the multiple options rule, that when Rashi offers two options, there is a need for both of the options, in that there is a shortcoming with option one addressed in option two. There is also, conversely, a shortcoming in option two that is addressed with option one. Applying the multiple options rule to the Rashi under discussion, the first option is that the Tuv Mitzrayim was Yayin Yashan. There is, however, a shortcoming with this option, addressed with, or at the very least, that does not exist with option that Yosef sent split beans. We will need to identify the shortcoming of option one. Similarly, we will need to identify the shortcoming of option two, the split beans option, that does not exist if we accept and interpret the Tuv Mitzrayim as Yayin Yashan. And then we will need to address the third component, the decision by Rashi that Yayin Yashan is the primary option in that it is less problematic from the standpoint of the Pshuto Shel Mikra. Anomaly number two is predicated upon another of the rules that the Rebbe applies to the study of Rashi, and that is that when Rashi does quote Midrashic sources, he usually does not identify the author of that information. His commentary to the words Mituv Mitzrayim seems to be in conflict with this rule, whereby Rashi informs us that the first option, Yayin Yashan, is drawn from the Gemara, and the Grisin Shalpul, the split bean, is drawn from the Medrash Agada. There is a flip side to the rule, and that is that when he does inform us of the sources, it is because that information is necessary to the commentary, either to respond to an implied textual difficulty, or to add a different dimension in support of the Pshuta Shamikra. Rashi does not identify the author of the information unless required to do so. The three subsections to Anomaly 3 address structural issues within Rashi's commentary as we compare the two options. With option 1, Rashi adds a reason as to why Yosef sent Yayin Yashan. The reason is because Dat Zekenim Nocha Hemenu. The word nocha linked to the word menucha, that the minds of elderly people are calmed, become relaxed, when they drink yayin yashan, old wine. When it comes to the grisin shell pool, the split beans, Rashi does not provide us with a reason. This was left to the Gurariye, as we noted earlier. A second anomaly is the use by Rashi of the word matsinu begamora. Matsinu, connected to the Shoresh Mem Tzadik Aleph, find, to come upon, to meet, to discover, and in effect Rashi is stating that we have found in the Gemara that Yosef sent Yayin Yashan as a gift to his father, a format that is almost non-existent in any of Rashi's commentaries throughout the entire Chumash. He does not counterbalance that with Matsinu Bemedrash Agada, and in fact the entire introduction could have been deleted, or alternatively, Rashi should have used the traditional introduction, Pirshu Gemara, that there is an explanation given in the Gemara. And finally, based upon the rule that within his commentary there is no superfluous information, when Rashi informs us of the Medrash Agada definition, he writes Gerisin Shalpul, however, that he sent Yayin Yashan, he adds the word Shishalach Lo. The thrust of Rashi is to interpret Tuv Mitzrayim. And therefore, Rashi should have simply moved on to the interpretation either Yayin Yashan or Grisin Shalpul. The introductory statement of Shishalach law is not relevant.